We're not going to go very fast and furious. We ain't in no big hurry, don't reckon. No, I'm just glad to be out here. And I laid them boards from the back end of that truck over to the back seat of that 65 Chevrolet and got that sow up on her feet and walked her down them boards and she laid down in the back seat of that car. Man, she was real pregnant. I took her to the house and got her in the barn, and the next day she had 18 pigs. This thing on it, I might ought to hit it with a stick or something. Oh, Gar probably got him off her. I put out a few limb lines. I see one up there. It's a good feeling when you look down that river and see them limbs shaking. I don't know how I got my tree. So you just put a couple dead minnows on her, just? No, we put bluegill on them. Bluegill, okay. Yeah. Now, trot line we baited it with minnows. They was a catfish down here that was so big that a lot of people hooked it on their lines and poles and stuff, but nobody could get it out. And me and Tom made our mind up we was going to try to get it. Shot one of my aunt's big white goose and used it for bait. Put it on that hay hook, throwed it out in the river and tied it on a big willow tree. We come down there the next morning and that willow tree was bending and popping and cracking. We had it hooked. I said, how are we gonna get it in? Climbed out on that willow tree and pulled on that chain and couldn't do nothing with it. We hooked that team of mules to that chain and took an ax and cut that tree and the slack popped out of that chain and the last thing we saw was them two mules ears going down the river. <laughs> He's still in there. We might have him this morning. What do you look for when you're going to set one? If you can get on the down current side, if you're fishing the stream, you've got current in it, it's got to get in that kind of eddy below a gravel bar. It, that seems to hold fish more. Other than that, there's really no trick to it. Be my luck, won't be nothing on that. Yeah, there's something on there. <laughs> Mr. Flathead. Boy, that's some good eating right there. That right there is some good eating. It tastes better than chicken. I could eat it with one foot in the far. <laughs> we got another one. Fifty hooks is all you're supposed to put on a trot line, and and that's a whole lot of hooks. You're supposed to check them every 24 hours. And that's a good thing. Be fair to the fish. I just bait mine with the. Uh, There's one right there with a minnow on it. Yeah, minnows. I just thread some minnows up on there, and you might pick up a turtle every once in a while, or something like that. But it's usually just catfish. I've got another one. Looks like that's a channel right there. Got another one coming up. You need me to get up there? Oh, that's a good channel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, about that. One time, I know we caught 19, 20. Wow. What's the biggest fish you ever caught doing this? Biggest fish I ever caught, I guess, I'm gonna say was probably about uh, 40 pound, maybe, flathead. Well, there is some work involved putting it out and baiting it up, but your main beam ought to be pretty stout because drift and stuff gets in it. And you want to make sure you got the weights on it, keep it down low. And you need to tag them, you put, and that's a good thing a tag is because it keeps people from just leaving their trash out there in the river for wildlife to get hung up in and stuff. And put your name and address on it. It's a good way to prepare for a fish fry though, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah. <laughs> One of them. Getting to be a pretty good mess right there. Just a beautiful place. I mean, 
you can get right in amongst Mother Nature and Waller in it, I'll tell you. But you can fish, you can hunt, you can trap, you can swim. I'll bring the grandbabies down here and the kids, and we play, swim, and uh, it's just, uh, just lucky. You just, I just feel blessed and lucky to, to be able to do it. It's not that far from a lot of people, but it seems like it's in the middle of nowhere. We are again, boys. Home sweet home. Didn't get to nothing on the jingle line, but we got a few cats on the top line. We want to show that there's more than one way to catch a cat, and there's one more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. Now, if you will, Lardo, give us your method here. Show us how you clean well, I'll, catfish. I'll shoot my best shot. All righty then. You uh, hook that backbone and and uh, get as much meat as you can. Once you get right about here, you can just go right on through. And then you trim with a pointy knife down to where you feel that rib cage come up there. And then you got to start kind of trimming around that rib cage. And you get a pretty good sized cat like like this one. He's got uh, he's got some belly meat on him. A lot of people throw that away, but it's boneless. They think it's got bones in it, but it doesn't. It's got no bones in it whatsoever. And that same method there, you can use on just about any fish, can't That's you? That's right. Yeah, you can play just about any fish that way. Get done, you've got a big chunk of boneless meat. Ain't bad for one trout line. It's kind of a lazy way to fish, you know, in a way, but... And it ain't as much fun as catching them on pole, but it's a whole lot of fun when you reach and grab that trot line. Yeah. Feel, I was morning, check it, feel something. You can feel the freezer up real quick. 